Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Goreski, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, a different kind of day here because I'm also going to be our speaker for today. So for those who don't know me, I am the founder of Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I'm an explorer at the National Geographic Society. And recently, I was able to visit a place I've wanted to visit for a really long time uh, in Costa Rica called the Osa Peninsula. So you may recognize uh, a few groups that we work with, like the Toucan Rescue Ranch in Costa Rica. But then we also work with the Osa Conservation, which is an amazing organization located right uh, in the Osa Peninsula, which is one of the most biologically diverse places on the planet. So it's a place where you can go and find an incredible number of species of plants and animals uh, and it has roughly two and a half percent of the planet's biodiversity in a place that's not very big at all. And I'm going to show you uh, on a map in a second. So the plan for today, we're going to take a little virtual expedition to the Osa Peninsula. I've got lots of pictures and cool video clips to share with you today. And then we're going to have a Kahoot quiz, and then we will uh, switch over to some Q&A action. So let's get into it right now. Uh, my screen is shared here, and I'm going to switch to... Uh, the presentation. So if for some reason it's not showing nice and full screen, let me know uh, and I can change the settings, but it should go to full screen right now. And again, let me know if you're having any trouble seeing the full screen. So here's a little map. This is looking at a portion of Central America uh, and it is, you can see Costa Rica here, not a very big country and it is sandwiched by Nicaragua up top and then down below we have Panama. So if we look at Costa Rica down in this corner, you can see this little chunk of land, this peninsula sticking out here. And this peninsula is the Osa Peninsula. And what makes it really special is you can see there aren't really any roads coming into it. And that's because if you want to drive there, it takes about seven hours. So this is San Jose. This is the capital. This is where you fly into. And if you want to drive, it takes seven hours. But then you need a four by four vehicle because it's off road, driving through rivers, no paved roads once you start trying to come into here. So that's one reason why it's so protected and there's so much rainforest in the area. Now we cheated a little bit. We took a small flight. So about four people on the plane and we flew from San Jose right down here into the Osa Peninsula. So that was our plane. You can see it's not very big. Uh, there were four passengers that day and then the, the pilots who were flying the plane as well. So not a big plane and it took about 45 minutes to make that flight. And as we went over, kind of leaving San Jose, you can see it starts to become more mountainous. There's more greenery covering the mountaintops as you move further and further away and get closer and closer to the Osa Peninsula. Once you get there, it is an absolutely amazing place. So uh, the rainforest meets the ocean here. So you have these two ecosystems kind of right on each other's doorstep. And then it's like your trip, typical rainforest where you have rainstorms moving in throughout the day. And that's actually a really good thing because all that rain means that you have this beautiful tropical ecosystem where so many plants uh, and animals can live. As you walk through the rainforest, you find all these little creeks and waterfalls which are pretty cool to see. And then this is kind of a view where we stayed. We stayed in a small little group of tree houses and then running through out the tree houses were these boardwalks where you could walk through the canopies of the trees and the monkeys and other animals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, you sometimes didn't even have to leave this boardwalk trail and you could find them all over the place like this howler monkey making its way along the railing here. So I want to share this little video clip with you uh, to give you a little idea of some of the things we saw in the rainforest. And I'll talk a little bit over it so the sound's not too important here. So this is off of our deck, off the deck of our treehouse. This is a white collared peccary. It came right up first thing in the morning onto the deck and was eating some of these plants in here. You can see the mess it's making. Uh, as it's eating those plants. Then again, this is right off of our deck. This is a hummingbird coming to visit some of these flowers. So every morning we had different types of hummingbirds coming along and visiting. 
the leaf cutter ants were everywhere. These trails of ants collecting the leaves and bringing them back to their nests. And then what they do is they kind of chew them up and they're farmers. So they grow fungus on these leaves that they bring back. And then they eat the fungus. That's their food. And you can see some bigger ants going by. They don't have any leaves. They're the soldier, the guard ants. And so they're protecting the workers who are working really hard to bring those leaves back. Here you can see at night, there's even more, these big trails, and they're just working nonstop to bring um, those leaves back. Here we've got a white-faced capuchin. And it might've been hard to see, but uh, she had a baby on her back. And you can see here how they move through the trees and jump around. This is a different kind of monkey. This is a squirrel monkey. And we visited Osa Conservation and we are at the back of their kitchen because this whole troop of squirrel monkeys was coming through the trees. There they are making their way. You hear those little chirps and squeaks. And that's how they communicate. And they're a little bit alarmed because they're not sure what I'm up to, but they're not too alarmed that they're leaving. And so they're just keeping an eye on me. So uh, there's three really good times to go through the rainforest. First thing in the morning, uh, in the evening when the sun is setting, and then in, at night when the nocturnal animals come out. You can go out during the day, and I did a lot, but it's really hot and really sweaty, and you don't see as many animals because they're usually kind of taking a little bit of shelter and avoiding that heat. So the birds in the morning are absolutely amazing. So this is a little velvety mannequin, and then there's a relative here. This is the red-capped mannequin. If you have time later today, you should search the moonwalk bird. And this is a male, and he shows off for the females by doing a moonwalk, um, which is really cool. So if you search that on YouTube, you should be able to find a video of this bird doing the moonwalk. Here's a trogan. So this is a beautifully colored male trying to get females' attention with those beautiful colored feathers. These guys are super uh, common all throughout the Osa Peninsula. This is a tropical kingbird. And so they kind of sit on fences and posts and in trees and they zip around and try to catch uh, flies and other insects in the air. The parrots are beautiful too. This is a red lord parrot. You can see the early morning sun is kind of reflecting off those green feathers. We've got lots of different species of birds called tanagers. And this is a red rumped tanager. And the female looks very different. The female is brown has a little bit of orange on her head, and that really helps with camouflage, especially, especially when sitting on a nest. There are birds of prey, so birds that are looking for other things to eat. So these are very common. These are roadside hawks, and you often see them by the side of the road, uh, sitting in trees and looking and watching. And you can see this one is watching the ground very closely, very intently. And a moment later, pounced on the ground and caught this little lizard. So very fast, very quick birds, and they're always on the lookout for something moving on the ground that they can pounce on. And there's owls. These owls are so cool. These are spectacled owls, and we spotted this pair early in the morning up in a tree. You can see they have these huge talons um, for catching what they eat, usually small mammals. Uh, maybe some lizards if they're out. And so it was really cool to be able to see these. The scarlet macaws are beautiful, beautiful birds. They're very, very loud. So you hear them way before you see them. And then they, this is one of the spots where they're the most common. So the Osa Peninsula is a great spot to find these parrots. 
you see them in the air like this. And I was always trying to catch a picture of them in the air like this. And they're always in pairs. So the male and the female, they're together for life. Uh, sometimes you see a third bird with them and that's their young, their juvenile flying with them. So oftentimes um, when they get bigger and they can fly as well, they'll follow their parents around from tree to tree as they're looking for food. And they love their food. They use their feet as kind of little hands. And then this one's eating in an almond tree and they have those big, big tough beaks so that they can eat through those tough shells. And then you have to be careful because they'll drop them the, the empty shells right on your head if you're not uh, being careful. And images like this are pretty cool. When they're in the air, they kind of fan their tail out like that. Sloths, you may have joined us in the past for Journeys to the Toucan Rescue Ranch, which is an amazing organization that is rehabilitating Costa Rican wildlife like toucans and sloths. So it was exciting to be able to see them in the wild. And so there's two species uh, in Costa Rica. We have these two fingered sloths with their little piggy noses. And you can see, you can't see in this one because there's a branch in the way, but there was a little baby on the tummy of this mother. And then we spotted one of the three fingered sloths as well. And it was on its way down to the ground because they come down once a week to go to the bathroom. So once a week, they come down to do a poop and then they crawl back up into the tree. And you might notice it's kind of got this cool green color in its fur. And that is algae. So little plants grow in this sloth's fur. And then other creatures like moths live in that algae. So the sloth is like its own little ecosystem. And then if you look here, you can see a little moth. These sloth moths live on the sloths. When they go down to do a poop, once a week, they land on the poop, they lay some eggs, and then they jump back onto the sloth. So really cool to be able to see that sloth and that cool kind of punk rock green algae hairstyle that they have. There are a special kind of species called endemic species. An endemic is a fancy way of saying you only find it in one place in the whole world. So this is a good example here. This, this is the Gufel Duce um, poison frog. And it's very, very tiny. It's only found in the Osa Peninsula, the only place in the world you can find it. And this actually came in the outdoor shower. I turned on the shower in the morning and this little male frog popped out. And you can see on the back here is a tadpole. So they carry the tadpoles to little spots in the trees where the water is kind of sitting. Little plants called bromeliads are really good spots. And it, little pools of water stay in those plants and that's where they put the tadpoles. And sometimes they'll even bring them food to eat as well or even lay an egg for the tadpole to eat, which is kind of cool. There's lots of other tree frogs. So going out at night is a great time to spot the nocturnal crew, the crew that only comes out at night. And so this is a gladiator frog sitting here on this tree. Another tree frog example here, this is a masked frog. You can see where it gets that name, that kind of mask it's got here behind its eye. A little close up here of a tree frog's eye. They always have these beautiful colors and speckles uh, and patterns. It's really cool to see. And this was my favorite. I was hoping, hoping, hoping to get a chance to see a red-eyed tree frog in the wild and be able to take some pictures. And so they come out at night and they like to be really close to ponds uh, and other bodies of water because they lay their eggs on the leaves. And then the tadpoles, when they hatch, they fall off the leaves into the pond. But sometimes predators find those eggs. So we saw some snakes like cat eye snakes and chunkhead snakes, and they look around for frogs to eat, but they also look for the eggs and they'll eat the eggs. But their eggs aren't defenseless. If a snake starts to eat the eggs, a signal goes out to the other ones and the eggs start to fall uh, into the water, which is uh, kind of a cool defense that they have. At night too, there's other creatures like this baby raccoon that came out of the bushes and crawled right up onto my boot, onto my Wellington, which I thought was kind of strange, but I think maybe it was lost and it didn't kind of didn't know where it was going or what to do. 
And then there's hunting. At night is a great time for predators to hunt. And this is one of those chunk head snakes. And it has caught this and all. And it is making it into a meal. And you can see it's a male and all because it has this yellow dewlap, this flap of skin. It can flash to impress the females. But unfortunately for this one, it is going to be a snack for this snake. And then the geckos are always hunting as well. So this gecko here caught a Katie did on the side of this post. At night, there's other predators like this scorpion. So this scorpion is making its way through the leaf litter and it's hunting for smaller insects. And you can see this little barb on the tail. This is very venomous and so it uses the pinchers to grab onto something and then it can inject the venom with its tail and it really likes to find these things. These are whip spiders. So it really likes to find those. Those are something that it hunts uh, in the leaf litter on the floor of the rainforest. We visited Osa Conservation, like I mentioned earlier, and they have an amazing sea turtle program. So there are seven species of sea turtles and six of them are threatened or endangered. So they kind of need a little bit of help. So what they do is they patrol the beaches every day and they look for turtles that are laying their eggs in nests. They take those eggs, they bring them into this protected spot and then wait for them to hatch. Depending on the species, it could be around 45 days. Then they take them out and they watch them as they make their way to the ocean. So if they weren't doing that, the eggs could be poached by people or they could even be found by predators like those raccoon, that raccoon you saw earlier and kinkajous and things like that. They love to eat turtle eggs. So this gives the eggs a boost, a nice, safe, protected spot. And then when they hatch, the sea turtles get a little boost to the water. So that's kind of what it looks like. Every morning they come down and they collect a bucket of baby sea turtles that have hatched. These are all of Ridley sea turtles. And then they are brought to the beach and let them crawl to the water because that helps them gain a little bit of strength to go to the water on their own. And they stand by because birds love to come and catch the baby sea turtles. So with people on the beach, the birds don't come to get them. So there's another picture of one of those turtles making its way. And then I took a little video clip using my drone. Um, so you can see a little bit of what this spot is like. 3,000 hectares of protected rainforest coming right to the Pacific Ocean. Nobody on the beach, no buildings. Uh, very beautiful. So let's take a look at this little clip here. So that's the Pacific Ocean you can see. This is called Piero Beach. You can see the rainforest coming right down to the beach and the big, massive waves. It's a little bit hard to tell from um, up top, but this is not a beach that you'd want to go swimming the waves are really um, rough here. So as you watch these next two waves coming in, you can kind of get an idea uh, of how big these waves are. Not a good swimming spot. In this next little clip, I'm right over top of the hatchery. So you can see one of the conservationists there. She has a bucket full of eggs that were collected. And so now they're transferring those eggs into a little nest in the hatchery. And then when they do hatch, they can be brought to the ocean. So just give you an idea, the hatchery is protected all around. Nothing else can get in with those nettings and then those kind of bamboo that you see that's protecting it as well. And then our friends make a break for the beach when the time comes. And then there's the waves taking them away. All right. So what else? A few more things to check out before we switch to a little bit of Q&A. 
we have these beautiful fire-billed aracaris, this toucan species. So that's one that you find in, in the Osa Peninsula, but you also find these beautiful chestnut mandible toucans. And you see these ones a lot more often as they kind of make their way in the trees looking for stuff to eat. A nice close look at that chestnut mandible there, helps them get their name. Sometimes they're called yellow-throated toucans, and I think you can see why by this picture. They love to play with their food. So here's one taking some fruit and they throw it up in the air and then they catch it uh, and swallow it down. And I love watching them fly from branch to branch. They're kind of like daredevils. They just jump off the branch and you wonder, are they gonna open their wings in time? Cause they just kind of dive bomb like these little arrows. So there's another look at one doing a dive bomb. And then right before they hit the branch, they pop their wings open and land on the branch, really graceful. The hummingbirds are beautiful. These little jewels that kind of dart around the rainforest all day long, um, looking for stuff to eat. You can see this one even has some pollen on its bill from darting around and getting that nectar from inside those flowers. So just a couple more pictures of those hummingbirds. Beautiful iridescent colors. And then here's one out in the rain, still zipping around and looking for something to eat. Hummingbirds can, on average, they beat their wings 50 times per second. One second, 50 beats of their wings. It's absolutely amazing. So they need a ton of energy which is why they're always on the lookout for nectar. There are four species of monkey. This is the last part we'll talk about before our Kahoot quiz. Four types of monkeys that you can find in the Osa Peninsula. There's the capuchin. There is the howler monkey. There is the spider monkey. And there's the squirrel monkey. And we're going to meet all four of them right now before we switch to our Kahoot. So this is the white-faced capuchin monkey. And you can see this one sitting and having a think, looking up. And they are daredevils too. They will leap all through the trees, onto buildings, off of buildings. And you can see this one here wants to get to that palm tree. And it's looking, it's getting ready to jump. And we have a couple pictures here where we can watch that jump in action. And then it grabs on and then just carries on with its day. The cool thing about the monkeys is if you keep your eyes open, you can often spot them with their babies. So here is a mother with the baby clinging on the back, watching what it's doing. Sometimes they don't love to have their picture taken. So this one here, this is a young one, and it's kind of looking and saying, hey, what's up? What's going on? Don't take my picture. And then they love to eat. So they're looking for bugs and fruits and things like that. And all day long, they're kind of munching and moving through the trees. There is a second species of monkey. There is the howler monkey. So this howler monkey gets its name. This one here is a male. You can see this pouch here. And they make the loudest sounds you can imagine in the rainforest. In fact, every morning at uh, around five o'clock in the morning, they start and they are loud. And I have a recording here. I'm going to play this recording while we look at a couple more pictures here of the howler monkeys. So there's some of them having a little bit to eat. posing for the camera. And then of course, if you're lucky, you can spot them with their babies as well. Now the next species we're gonna talk about is the spider monkey. And spider monkeys are a ton of fun to watch move through the trees. This one here is the mother with its baby. You can see the baby's very curious about its own tail. There's a nice kind of little close-up with a little bit of bedhead. And these tails are like a fifth limb. So imagine you had an extra arm and they are prehensile, which means they can grab things. So you can see 
while sitting in the tree, this mother has an anchor, an extra hold up there. You can see the baby down there. But then it's kind of scary to watch them because they swing through the trees and they don't seem to care. And the baby just kind of holds on the back and hopes for the best. You can see the way the mother moves through the trees. No fear at all. And the baby just kind of holds on tight. There's a little look at our friend. And then again, that tail up there holding it in the tree while it has something to eat. And then in the afternoon, they kind of get together in a group like this and they cuddle up for a rest. And again, even though they're resting, they still think about falling. And so they wrap around, they hold on uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. And that brings us to our last monkey. We met this one earlier, the squirrel monkey. So again, they can be in groups up to 60 monkeys sometimes, and they just move through the rainforest with those little squeaks that we heard, keeping in contact, shouting out if they see a predator, and looking for food all day long, these little squirrel monkeys. So here's a couple more sitting in the tree. So four species of monkey in Costa Rica, the squirrel monkey, the spider monkey, the howler monkey, um, who am I forgetting? Squirrel, spider, howler, uh, and capuchin. That's who I forgot. All right. Well, that is what I wanted to share with you today. I am going to shift gears a little bit here, and I'm going to bring you back, and we are going to have a Kahoot quiz. So if you head over to Kahoot.it, uh, let me bring this up on the screen so you can see it there as well. Kahoot.it, and then it's going to ask you for a PIN number when you get there. So I am going to share my screen and make sure that we have that PIN number nice and front and center for you. Um, let me just grab it. In fact, I have to open it again because I accidentally closed it in behind. So let's grab that. Let's hit start. And then you're going to have an option here to put in that PIN number. So let me share my screen. Share screen, we'll do a window. There we go. So you should see this now. The pin number for today is 6021459. So once you go to kahoot.it, 6021459. If you have like a tablet or a cell phone, a mobile device, you can just scan that code at the top, that QR code, and that'll bring you right in. Otherwise, punch it in. If your classroom doesn't have one-to-one -one stuff at your seat, then your teacher could pop it up at the front uh, and you could shout out your answers to him or her. We've got five questions today, some true and false, some short or um, multiple choice. 20 seconds for each question. If you get the answer right, you're getting some points. If you get it right really quickly, you get even more points. If you get it wrong, but it's really, really fast. That doesn't matter. We got nothing for you. You got to get that right answer. And the quicker you get it in, uh, the better chance you have of more points. So I think we have a crew in here now ready to go. It looks like it's slowed down. I do see some rainforest creatures here like the piranha. Uh, what else do I see? A jaguar. A green turtle. You definitely see those out on the beaches, the sea turtles. All right, I think we are ready to go. Let's see what happens. So again, 20 seconds for each question, five quick questions. If you are paying attention, these are gonna be super easy for you. So here we go. Question one, the Osa Peninsula is in which country? Was it Panama, Brazil, Costa Rica, or Colombia? So Osa Peninsula is in what country? Panama, Brazil, Costa Rica, or Colombia? You have five more seconds to get your answer in. All right, good job crew, off to a good start. It was Costa Rica in Central America. The bronze cat is holding down that top spot. Let's go to a true and false. An endemic species is found all over the world. 
So true or false, an endemic species is found all over the world. You have 10 seconds to get that answer locked in. Oh, everybody got it in there. That's right, it's false. Endemic means it's only found in one spot in the world. And then a pandemic species is found all over the world. So endemic, just in that one tiny spot. Pandemic, you can find them all over the world. The Rocky Jaguar has taken top spot. Let's jump to our next question. How often do sloths come down to poop? Once a day, once a week, once a month, or once a year? We talked about those moths that like to fly down and lay their eggs in the sloth poop. All right, good job crew, everyone's sharp today. Uh, it is once a week, the sloth will come down to the ground and that's a risky time because predators uh, could find them when they come down to do their business. Rocky Jaguar is holding on. Let's go to another true and false. Hummingbirds beat their wings around 50 times per second. So this is an average, about 50 times per second. Is that true or is that false? Okay, that is true. Some are slower, like there's a giant hummingbird and they beat their wings about 10 times a second. Others can be up to 80 times per second, but on average, it's about 50 times per second for a hummingbird. Okay, we have one more question here to sort things out. Which monkey isn't found in Costa Rica? Is it the howler monkey that isn't found? The vervet monkey, the spider monkey, or the squirrel monkey? One of those monkeys does not belong. We did not see that monkey. Okay, it is the vervet monkey. They are found in Africa. Actually, in some of the times when we visit the Old Pejeta Conservatory in Kenya to see the white rhinos, we do see some vervet monkeys bouncing around in the background trying to steal some of the rhino food. So good job, crew. The howler, the spider, the squirrel, and the capuchin monkey are all found in Costa Rica. Let's look at our leaderboard. In third place, we've got the ancient sphinx. In second, we've got the Lucky Yeti. And to finish us off, top spot, the Hero Tiger sneaking in right at the end. All right, good stuff, crew. Let us switch over here, stop our screen share, and let's get into some Q&A action. So uh, if you're tuning in via YouTube, don't be shy. Use that chat bar, um, and then you can check it out. Uh, and then we'll, we've got a few camera classrooms hanging out today too. So I'm going to bring some of those live with us. Um, all right. So we have a home crew hanging out with us today, which is pretty cool. We always love, uh, when home crews join in with us, I am going to bring them in momentarily. Just change my settings so I can see us again. All right, there we go. So our home crew is joining us from... There we go. They are joining us in Illinois. Let me bring them in. So, how you doing today, bud? This must be Basil, is that right? Yeah. Awesome, you got a question for us? Um, not really. No? Okay, well I'm gonna come back your way. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them. You can see there's a little chat bar. You can put it there so I know to come back to you, okay? But I'll okay. check in a little bit later, see if you have any questions. Then I know your sister's hanging with us today. We've got Amelia hanging out with us. How are you doing, Amelia? Can you hear me okay? Good. Good, good. Amelia, do you have any questions for me? Um, yes. All um, right, I'm ready. What if the bird? What if, what if the like birds came to the turtles while they were walking to the thing? How would the That's people right. uh, prevent them from getting eaten? That's a really good question. I like that question. So the birds are absolutely on the lookout for those turtles. 
especially a bird called a frigate bird. I don't have a picture handy, but frigate birds are kind of pirates. So they look for easy food. So sometimes if they see other birds catching a fish, they will chase those fish and bug them, bug them, bug them until they drop the fish and then they can eat it. They also look out for free meals like the sea turtles. So two ways that they can kind of keep the birds away. One, just by standing there and being really close by is oftentimes um, enough to keep the birds away. But if too many birds start to come, then they worry that the sea turtles, when they're in the water and getting little breaths of air, that the birds might pick them out from the water. So if too many birds come, they will pick up all the baby sea turtles from the beach and put them back in the bucket. And then they'll just wait till later in the day, or they might move to a different spot on the beach. So if those birds come, they'll wait till later in the day uh, and then they'll let them go. That's a really good question, Amelia. Thank you. So we have a classroom here joining us. Um, oh, another group in Illinois, some fifth graders. Let me bring them in front and center here. How are we doing, fifth graders? Good. Good. All right. We're ready for you. Um, did you ever get attacked by an animal? Okay. So, um, no. I, I'd say the closest is maybe a few bug bites. Um, the thing about the rainforest, and I think that people, when they think about the rainforest, they think of poisonous snakes. They think of scorpions. They think of... Um, big cats like jaguars and pumas. And I really wanted to see jaguars. I really wanted to see a puma. But the problem is they're really rare. They're threatened in a lot of cases. They don't want to see people. So they hear you, smell you. They know you're coming way before you get close. And they generally just leave. So nothing to really worry about there. I did see some puma scat, which is basically puma poop. It was full of fur uh, and bones, but that's the closest I got to seeing one. The snakes, there's vipers like the Bushmaster and the Fertilance. But again, during the day, they hide, um, like to get right tucked up in tree trunks and the big buttresses of tree, tree trunks and they hide there. Um, at night, they come out to hunt. But the only way one of them is going to bite you is if you step on it or you get too close. So they're doing it out of self-defense. Same with scorpions. They're not looking for you. But every morning we shook our boots out. We turned them upside down and shook them out just in case a scorpion decided um, that it wanted to hide out there. Didn't want to get a scorpion sting on our feet. And then the insects, they're not bad either. I would say we were there around nine, 10 days, and maybe 10 insect bites. Didn't see any mosquitoes, so it wasn't so bad. Uh, okay, looks like we have another question ready. What animal species have you seen the most? Uh, uh, what was the most common? I That's tough. This place that we stayed is called Lapa Rios. So it's just this group of tree houses um, right on the coast. And... I mentioned that boardwalk that connects them all and then goes up to the front where there's kind of a, a place to eat and, and kind of relax. And every day you could see all four species of monkey, which was really, really cool. Every day you would see those chestnut builds or mandible toucans every day. So I think the monkeys, um, probably the spider monkey the most, they were kind of always around. And then that yellow-throated or chestnut mandible toucan always could find them hanging around as well. So I think those were the most common. And the ants, those, those ants, uh, those leafcutter ants were everywhere, walking in their little trails, um, bringing those leaves back. All right, is that another question I think I see? Yes. I, um... So when you're taking pictures of the flying birds, uh -huh. uh, do they like? Do you have to zoom in on your camera so that they don't fly away? Yeah. Why don't um, I'm going to take a second here because my camera is just on the other side um, of me, right uh, in my open closet. So let me grab the camera and I'll show you what the camera looks like and I'll tell you a little bit about how you take pictures of things that move really, really fast. So let me see. 
if I can grab this quickly for you. All right. So let me show you what I'm bringing over here. This is my camera body. Oh, let me move that over there. So this is my camera body. This is where um, the memory card goes and the battery and things like that. And then on the front, I can add different lenses depending on what I'm trying to take pictures of. So those frog pictures and some of those insect pictures, I use a really small lens. You see how small this one is? This is a macro lens and it helps me focus on things close by uh, that are smaller. So I can get that nice focus. Then if I want to zoom in, I use something bigger like this lens here. This lens goes all the way up to 500 um, millimeters here. And I can kind of zoom it out like that. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like on the camera, um, I can quickly pop it onto the camera and show you what it's like. This is kind of big. You kind of have to get used to carrying it around in the rainforest. It is kind of heavy. And then I add this onto it as well. And this kind of helps. Uh, there we go. Oops. This kind of helps with the light. So too much light doesn't come into the lens. If I back up a little bit, you get a feel for how big this is when you're carrying that through the rainforest. But worth it to zoom in on some of those hard uh, to see things. And then the birds move really, really fast in the sky. So I can control the speed of my shutter and my shutter lets light in and out. So if I have it open for a long time, then it lets more light in. But when things are moving fast, it's blurry. So I have to speed up my shutter speed to one two thousandth of a second when the birds are flying. So it's really quick and then I can catch them in the air and then they're not blurry. So that's how I do that with my big old camera. And I think I see someone else with the question. What was your favorite monkey to see? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, I'm gonna have to go spider monkey again because they're just so fearless the way they kind of go through the trees. They use their tail more than any of the other monkeys. They don't really see the other monkeys using their tails. Uh, they oftentimes had those little babies with them. The babies were really curious and they'd look at the camera because they thought that was kind of interesting. So yeah, I really like the spider monkeys. The howler monkeys were cool, but if they're waking you up every morning at five o'clock um, with those big loud calls, you might not think they're so cool, but I like them. Uh, go ahead, pal. I see someone else up there. Uh, how did the yellow striped frog get its poison? How did the frog get its poison? That's a really good question. And uh, I'm 99% sure that it's something that's just um, part of them, something that they, they develop within their own system. So some creatures can get their, their venom from the food that they eat, but I'm 99% sure that the, the frog that we saw, we saw two species of those poison frogs. There was one that was black with beautiful green stripes. And then there was that one, the Gufel Dulce one. And that one had, it was only found in that one spot in the Osa Peninsula. So I'm pretty sure, I'll Google it later just to make sure and I can email you uh, the answer for 100%, but I'm 99% sure it's something that their body develops um, as a defense. So I'm going to come to your question. I see our friend in the yellow shirt. I just want to check in with the home crew again and see if anybody has a question. Okay. Basil, how's it going there? Um, I'm wondering. Yes. Did anyone there um, use, like, did you get to do anything with the animals? Like, do you, I don't know, like see them do tricks or you teach them to do tricks or anything? Yeah, so they're, they're the best kind of animal. They're wild. So you don't want to do anything with them. You want to keep them that way. You don't want them to be used to people. 
But when we visited the Osa Conservation with the sea turtles, we were able to help um, collect the turtles from their nest and then bring them to the beach and let them go. So you have to wear gloves because you don't want... Um, to touch them. You know, exactly. You don't want them to get sick. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the most... And then the, I mentioned the Toucan Rescue Ranch and they rescue Costa Rican wildlife. And so when they're hurt and they need some help before they can put them back in the wild, they stay away. They kind of have them in a cage. They feed them, but they don't touch them. They stay away. And that's the best thing to do to help protect the wildlife. Mm. All right. Good question. Uh, Amelia, you got one more for us? Um, how do the howler monkeys... Wait, do the howler monkeys wake up, like, why do they wake up super early? Uh, that's a good question. I think, you know, they, there's an advantage to being up early in the rainforest in that you can find food before it gets too hot during the day. So I think that's the one reason they get up nice and early is they want to start finding food. I think one of the reasons they call really loudly first thing is a couple things. One to kind of shout out to their whole family, like, hey, I'm here, here's where we are, find us here. But also to kind of keep other groups away. So they have a territory that they protect. And so the males call out really loud and then males from another territory call back. And that's kind of like a threat saying, I hear you, I know you're there, stay away from my territory. So I think they get up nice and early to get a nice quick start on the day before it gets really, really hot in the afternoon. And then you don't see them as much in the afternoon or hear them as much because I think they're relaxing, they're sleeping, um, and they're waiting for the evening to maybe look for a little more food. Good question. I have okay, go for it. How do, how do they have enough energy to run away and then just go <laughs> as loud as they can? How do they have enough energy? Well, they have, I don't know 100% how it works, but they have this big pouch underneath. And I think that they can kind of fill that with some air and push it out there into their kind of speech box, uh, which we have as well. We have our vocal cords where, so we can talk and make sound, but they have that extra kind of little pouch where they can really bring in a nice gulp of air and push uh, push out, and they can be heard from a great distance away. All right. And we'll visit a few more questions here. Um, what was the rarest animal you saw? Um, I bet you it would be that frog, that uh, Gufo Dulce poison frog, because I didn't see any more the entire time that we were there. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so I, I think I got really lucky to see it come out of the shower like that, out of the rocks. So that was pretty cool. And then there's a vulture. Now, they may not be as rare as I think, but I only saw one once from a distance. It's called a king vulture. And I'm going to share a picture with you really quickly so you can see what they look like. They're really cool looking vultures. So let me just share my screen. We will do a window this time. There you go. Here's a look at that king vulture. You can see they kind of have those white and black feathers and then these really cool, colorful heads. So that was really neat to be able to see one. And the guide I was with was really excited to see it. So that kind of led me to believe that they don't see them all the time. All right. I think I see someone in red. Um, what car did you use to get around? So... We had a, a four by four, so kind of like a, a Land Rover. So a Jeep, nice big tires, um, really good for going off road, going through rivers and things like that, as long as they're not too deep. And then they kind of had a funny vehicle. If you've ever looked at people on safari in Africa, sometimes they're sitting in the back of a truck and there's like rows of seats, but they're open to the outside. So they had one of those. I wasn't in it very often, but I think they use it sometimes to take people maybe who don't want to hike through the rainforest, maybe people who prefer to kind of, you know, go along the road and see what they see and take pictures. So usually the, the, the Land Rovers, the nice big Land Rovers with the big tires so that we could kind of make our way around like that. 
All right. Well, we are at our, we're, we're over our stop time. So a uh, huge shout out to our classrooms today. Thank you so much for being with us today uh, and sharing those great questions. Of course, thanks for hanging out and playing the Kahoot. A big shout out to our home crew as well. I'll bring them in for one wave there quickly. Amelia Basil, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Our fifth graders in Illinois, thanks so much for hanging out with us today as Bye. well. Bye. All right. We'll Thank see you, you guys. Hope you yeah. learned a little bit about Costa Rica and I hope you get to visit it sometimes. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. It's amazing. I never go where I get so tired. All right. Well, we're going to sign off for today. Thanks so much, everybody.